last time I saw him, he treated me like my mother, as if I wasn't there. He never looked up when I talked of marriage. It reminded me of when I was nine, and he set me on a rocking horse and rocked it so quickly, all I could hear was the creaking of the rockers on the floor and Grandpa saying it's going to gallop, the head leaping up while I clung to its neck, terrified of falling. When he slept, it was with one eye open, and though he pretended to be deaf, he heard everything you told him. When I asked for your mother's hand in marriage, he said, aren't there enough problems in the world already? And when I mentioned love, he said, oh, in that case, Arthur, it won't have to go as far as marriage. In that case, Arthur, we'll be all right. The first time I saw him, he was standing on the terrace at the front of the house. His back to the door, and he was looking out across the garden. The light was shining behind his head, and his figure looked taller than I'd imagined. Stiff, like a general standing on a field of battle. When you told me I'd have to meet him as well as your parents, I wonder why he rather than your father was so important. I thought nobody can control people in the way he does. Hasn't he come to the end of his life? Anything he says is of no more importance than anything he said when he first began. So long ago it hardly matters. Just before I took his pulse, he said that he often spoke to people who came to see him and whom he knew had been dead for years, and mentioned later how throughout his life he'd collected pictures, none of which were any good. I thought, if he hasn't achieved what he set out to do and has failed at everything he set his hand to, what value does he place on anything? He was sitting in his chair. I turned. He was dead within a minute. seaside, traveling in a coach beneath a bridge. I see the bridge. It's really a foot walk, so high above me. It seems I've passed beneath it ever since. I look out of the window of a bus and I see the foot walk overhead, so narrow and high. On its arched, green-painted metal work support. As it seems, I've passed beneath it ever since. Beyond the bridge is a beach which lies in a bay surrounded by houses. Footpaths wind across a hill. Lifts go up and down a steep embankment. At some point earlier in the journey, I've been left alone on a station platform. Or find that I am alone. And those that had been with me are there no longer. Do you want your tea, sir? Tea? Yes. I brought a table out. That's right. Would you like to sit down, sir? No. Would you like me to stay and talk? What about? Anything you like. I was recalling my childhood. I, as a child, liked ever after stories. Ever after means the good things go on for good. Uh, how can they go on for good? <laughs> well, nothing goes on for bad, sir. This went on for bad. Is there anything I can get you? What's your name? Bristol. In Bristol? Well, I was thinking about the sea. Yes, sir. First time I saw it, I thought the edge of the world had come. The edge of the sea seemed the edge of what I thought went on for good. It went on for bad, came to an end, breaking, coming down in tiny white crusts. I stood amongst them. The bread 
Roam around them between my toes. We all have to come to an end. I wonder. I walk around the house. The people there are mad. They go on as if they knew what they were doing. They don't. Nobody does. Yet they go from A to B as if that was precisely what they intended. We all have a destiny to fulfill. I wonder. Can you smell a blossom? I've been somewhere else. I can never recall. Odd sounds, odd smells, odd incidents, encounter. Occasionally bring back a fragment, like a headland glimpse or the peak of a mountain. Is it a continent, I think? Or only an island? I traveled far when I was younger. Well, I scarcely traveled at all. To the sea once, not much further. I've endeavored to live my life in the place where I started. If I stick to where I start, I might find out A, where it all went wrong, B, why I arrived here in the first place. Traveling broadens the mind. It narrows it. Jesus never traveled. Not more than a hundred miles. Michelangelo, Rembrandt, Milton, now they're people who made a journey of scarcely any consequence at all, and subsequently never traveled further. Travel is for people without imagination, dullards, clods, those who need to animate the landscape, otherwise they see nothing there at all. Are you married? No. My daughter's in the house. You could talk to her. Her husband has worked for most of the day, and she's nothing else to do but write her memoirs. Yes, sir. It's been suggested that I should write my memoirs. I can't remember anything. She's endeavoring to write them for me, what she can recall of our life together. It's what I thought you were here for. Sir? I thought you were someone who knew me. No, sir. And you're not even married? No. What does your wife do? I haven't got a wife. Do you know very much about me? I've read about you. Really? What have you read? Ever since I was a youngster. Oh, really? But how long have you known me? Only for the past week. While I've been engaged by Mr. Benson. Who's Mr. Benson? He's your son-in-law. What have you read about him? Nothing. Hey, he was a doctor. And he went in for business. He was a research chemist. He discovered a pharmaceutical drug. He was taken on to the board of directors, and subsequently he was appointed chairman of an organization I heartily despise. I hate wealth, yet I'm unable to do without it. I tried living in a room all by myself, no one to look after me from dawn till dusk. Finally, my daughter rescued me. When did you know me? I don't know you, sir. I was appointed to this post a week ago. Are you a spy? I was in the army for several years, sir. Subsequent to that, I was in the catering trade. What else? I was employed by Mr. Benson. What's he got to do with it? I supervise the company dining room. A cook? A manager. My daughter's very naive. She's no head for other people. I loved her very much when she was young. When she grew older, I found I didn't know her. Well, what do you do? What well, here, sir? As a catering man. I arranged the lunches that Mr. Benson gave. Who to? Oh, you can tell me. I I'm top dog. I've ruled the roost here for as long as I remember. They were lunches given for executives of the company and for the personnel of other companies with whom Mr. Benson was doing business. Well, why did you give it up? Mr. Benson offered me the job of being your companion. Wasn't the other job good enough? I wanted a change. Well, why should you want a change? It wasn't going to be a change of a permanent nature. What? I'm going to die very soon, and you can go back to spying on someone else. Mr. Benson wanted someone whom he trusted. I worked for Mr. Benson, sir, for the past 12 years. Do they want me to defect? No, sir. 
If they pay me enough, my memory might start coming back. I've been thinking of defecting for quite some time. Where, sir? I exhausted Matilda by having to keep an eye on me. That's why they had to get in the man. I have a notebook. I leave it on my dressing room table. Matilda reads it. She tells her husband. Who is her husband? Mr. Benson, sir. He reads it. What they don't know is I have another notebook which nobody reads. Those in there are secret thoughts. Those in there are not for public consumption. What's your name? Bristol. Bristol. What a curious name. My name's Kitchen. Yes, sir. I was recalling my childhood a moment ago. My childhood is the profoundest period of anyone's life. After that comes anticlimax. After the age of 21, nothing happens again. That's why Matilda can recall so clearly everything that happened to me between the ages of 35 and 40, which to me are a complete blank, but which to her are as clear as if they happened this morning. Similarly, Gloria. What awful names these women have. Has my granddaughter been here recently? She's the only person I can talk to. I've looked all over the garden for you. You shouldn't have such big gardens, then I wouldn't get lost. Has he been all right? This man's name is Bristol. He's a German spy. The German war, Father, has been over for a very long time. He's a Russian spy. He's been encouraging me to defect. He's brought you some tea, which you haven't drunk. I'll look after him a while. Right, ma'am. You shouldn't talk to Bristol as if he were a servant. He is a servant. He's your companion. Is he? His wife has divorced him. We invited him here to give him a break. He told me he'd been invited here to keep an eye on me. He told me that. He said your husband had instructed it. Arthur suggested he might like the job in order to take his mind off things. I was going to talk to him about my childhood. And you come out here and interrupt. Is Gloria home? No. Is Arthur? No. Life is meaningless without your mother. Mother's dead, father. I don't wish to hear any more about it. Where she's living, I've no idea. I met her when I was only 16. I shan't stay and talk if you refuse to listen. You can send that man back. He reports everything I say to Moscow. He reports everything you say to Moscow. Only what you say isn't all that important. I let fall things that the Americans, leave alone the Russians, would pay a very great deal to know. If I charge for it, there's no knowing where I'd be. I've so much to say, yet there's no one here to listen. I listen. It's a great deal, in that case. I'd like to tell you about your mother. I don't wish to hear it, Father. I've heard it a dozen times already. I seduced her when I was only 17. I know. Did she tell you that? You told me that. We were married for 55 years. When she come back, I'd tell her how much I love her. She suspected I didn't, I did. I loved her so much I could never tell her. I loved her so much I could never admit that I loved her at all. Why did you die, my dear? Why did you leave me all alone? How are you getting on with our memoirs, Matt? You'll have to get that researcher back. How could things that meant so much to me mean nothing to me now? You're here to relax, Father. You're here to get better. Arthur. Arthur, I can never get on with 
met. Oh, I know you love him. He means everything in the world to you. Perhaps he doesn't. Does he... Does, does he... Does he have sensations like anybody else? If you don't answer my questions, what's the point of my asking them? What is the point, indeed? Uh-huh. Now you're getting peaky. I never liked you peaky. Your mother was always peaky. I never cared for it. In a year or two, I may be dead. Is Gloria coming home? She's the only person in this world I can talk to. She despises me. And people despise me, I know where I am with them. We haven't heard from her for weeks. I miss her. The doctor's coming this afternoon. I don't want to see him. You should be glad he takes so much care of you. Especially after the way you treated Maidley. Maidley was a sycophant. He only wanted to look after me because I'm a very old man. You exhausted his patience. The doctor expects to be called out at night. <laughs> Not every night. This new man will get bored quite soon. Oh, he listens very patiently at present, and he doesn't believe a word. In addition to which, you haven't his number. I don't believe his name's Bristol. It's a code name. Bristol's a seaport. It has access to America as well as to Russia. The name of the next man will be Liverpool. Ships will sail away with my secrets, your secrets, the secrets you're writing in your memoirs. I... I have a reluctance, Father, to write anything at all. When I'm dead, you'll find it easier. The memoirs of the dead are easier to come by than those of the living. Why on earth did you read philosophy? I think my daughter succeeded by her own resources in getting to a university, which I, as a man, would have been proud to have got to, and the subject she takes is the most useless of all economics or history or English even, one of the sciences, medicine. You have a great capacity for loving. Medicine, in that case, would have to be out. I talked to your mother here. She seldom listens. I believe she's taken up with somebody else. He was always much sought after by other men. Why can't I have a wife like that? You could see the complaint on their lips whenever we met. I'm condemned to the wife I have, yet Kitchen has the best in the land. She was very loyal. She weakened once and had a desperate affair. She didn't love the man, but I'd driven her into a corner. When it was over, she scarcely stirred. She lay crying in the bed, curled up like a mouse. Mouse? Mouse? I see. She scarcely heard. I'd have done anything I did, do everything to make her happy. But at the height of my career, just after you were born, I was scarcely home one, one night in five. I had no choice. I'll send Bristol out. If you got a woman in, you could dictate your memoirs. She could type them out. We could sit together under the trees and correct them. Is there anything you want? More tea? I'd drink. And everyone hides the bottles. I've tried drugs. They only make me unconscious. You are my only relief. Who, who is the man that does the garden? Jeffreys. I gave him a pound the other week to bring me a bottle. He never bought me anything. And I accused him of stealing the money. He walked away. He was weeding a border at the time. I'm sure he hadn't finished. He brought the money to me. Everyone has instructions not to indulge you. I can't sleep at night. You have your pills. You've no idea of the terrors, Matt. If I had a drink, they'd go away. Drink has been forbidden. I'd rather die. I'd rather die right now. Mrs. Benson. Mr. Benson's arrived in the house. Oh, that's early. Yes, ma'am. He's in his study. Will you stay with my father for a while, Bristol? Yes, ma'am. 
He's being obstreperous today. Yes, ma'am. Were you really an officer? No, sir. I thought you said you were an officer. No, sir. I simply heard you say you were an officer in the armed forces. I said I was in the army. I was an NCO. I've made and broken generals. I was eight months at the war office, over two years at the Board of Trade, three and a half at the Ministry of Health. What I didn't know about nurses, I could write for you on the tip of a needle. I've got you a commission if I'd known you then. I've no pride. If I'd had pride, I wouldn't be where I am now. The most respected political leader of my time who never became prime minister. A speech of 25 minutes, an interview of 15 seconds put an end to my career. Are you listening? Yes, sir. I understand your wife has recently divorced you. Yes, sir. Have you done something that you shouldn't? No, sir. So why, why has she divorced you instead of the other way around? She fell in love with another man. How long were you married? Fifteen years. Almost as long as you've been in the service of my son-in-law. I married when I came out of the forces, sir. I thought you said you weren't an officer. There are other people in the army apart from officers, sir. Father, I never met him. What, what does my son-in-law want coming home at this time? He leads my daughter to dance. He doesn't respect her. Well, how did you feel when your wife went off with another man? Not very good, sir. Is the other man married? Yes, sir. Well, what's he do? He's the manager of a building works. What sorts of building works? He builds houses. He was in charge of a house we were having built ourselves. Is he living in it? I sold it. You have any children? Two. How old? Twelve and fourteen. Are they here with you? They're with my wife. No, but I mean, if she left you, shouldn't they be with you? They were happier living with her, sir. You keep your feelings under control. Yes, sir. My son-in-law keeps his feelings under control. That's why he succeeded in the way he has. Well, apart from your marriage, have you anything else to talk about? What subject would you care to talk about, sir? I had the secretary until a year ago. I can't be left alone with a woman. I had a male secretary. He got bored. Nobody writes to me anymore. Nothing a politician does is ever of any consequence. The real decisions are taken by somebody else. Who, sir? As you know, I never found out. Will you marry again? No, sir. You sound certain. <laughs> yes, sir. Marriage is the trickiest thing in the world. People disparage it nowadays and make light of it. Yet marriage is the profoundest experience anyone has. You were saying a little while ago, sir, that childhood is the only experience we ever had. You find me full of contradictions. Nevertheless, there's a good deal of sense in them. They say nowadays it's common for people to marry twice, well, three or four times in the circles that I move in. I wouldn't describe those as marriages at all. I'd say they were the cavortings of disorientated people. Marriage to one person is a lifetime's experience. It's only through a lifelong commitment to one person only that the depths and the ever profounder depths that marriage is capable of revealing can be experienced. You'll know. Having let this other man go off with your wife, you'll find the remainder of your existence will be like a shell, hard, unyielding, with nothing inside. 
I believe my talk is distressing you, but my advice, rather than divorce your wife, would be to kill this other man. What if someone doesn't love you? She married you. When my wife went off with another man, I injured him so deeply. He never looked at a woman again. He's coming out. That woman in the village has been complaining. Is there anything I can get you, Mr. Benson? No, that's all right, Bristol. I'll just have a word with Father. I've been talking to him about his divorce. It distresses him. You can see by the way he walks. He'll be in a terrible mood for the rest of the day. If it's about this incident in the village, I've complained before about the lack of urinals. What is one supposed to do at my age? I knocked on the house door. The woman refused to let me in. I told her my name. I brought out my wallet. I showed her the statements of that bank account that you refused to let me use. It was all to no avail. I was compelled to use her garden wall. And she watched me. People have no regard for age. They see their own destinies far too clearly. Have you telephoned my office? I have not. On the recording machine this morning, there was 35 minutes of personal abuse. That's not very long. The voice is unmistakable. I don't understand why people employ these machines. In my day, a letter was a work of art. Now all people can do is scribble. I wasn't told of the tape for over an hour. A thing like this is never contained. Half the office have heard it now. They may have made a tape of it. They may. Another tape. I understand precisely what you mean. You may be blackmailed. It's hardly likely. Well, it's quite possible. People will stoop to anything for power or money. I've known men of the greatest importance in the eyes of the world who transcribe a tape like that as quickly as they'd stoop in the street for a penny. Principles are not involved. Life is amoral. There is no prejudice. Witness my life. Spoiled by one speech and one interview of 15 seconds. I've had no luck in my life whatsoever. I've been aware of its indifference from the very beginning. I shall speak to Maidley. I don't have Maidley. Why not? I don't get on with him. Matt told me he was coming this afternoon. Another. There are worse places you could stay, Father. Without a family atmosphere. This place is no family. It has no atmosphere. You and your infidelities have seen to that. One girl followed by another. One deception by another. This loyalty is, is a cancer. It eats into the heart of any marriage. You're poisoning your entire existence, Father. Faults like these, if they have to be expressed, should be confessed to someone you trust. Not confided to a tape machine in someone's office. I've had enough of passivity. Arthur, that's Matilda's philosophy. That's the creed of your long-suffering wife who's borne you a child and stood by you all these years. I've no patience with her. She becomes immobilized. She becomes like Christ. I've been telling your husband, Matt, I am a man of action. We've heard what action, Father? I don't ask you to listen. Those messages of your husband's here alone. I've brought you a coffee. Eight coffee. That's for me. Why should he have everything? Have you talked to him? You can see the results. Why do you give in to this mangling of your loyalty and love? I can't sit and watch it. I can't see. Someone I love destroyed. I shall have to ask Bristol to take you in. You can only take me in if I agree. I intend to resist. I shall shout and scream. Is there anything else you want? <laughs> no, I shall have to go. Don't tell me he came home to complain of your father. This loyalty, wretch! He's off to betray you with another woman. You'll kill yourself, Father, if you go on like this. Arthur's going now because he has to. I see. I want you to bear in mind what I've told you. Matilda agrees. We can't have our life interfere with in this way. You have your room. You have someone to talk to. You have something to occupy your mind. I shall turn up at your factory and give a speech. Speeches have always been my forte. I have a power to sway people, which my enemies recognize to this day. Read my history. 
Read my memoirs when they're finally published. If you turn up at the factory, I shall have you arrested. Will you? I can't put it plainer than that. I don't believe you can. I have to go. I imagine you must. Shall I see you this evening? Yes. I shan't be late. Torture. New torture. If you saw how your wife waited for you, you'd never leave this house again. Goodbye, father. Why do you let him abuse you so? He doesn't abuse me. You're a woman of taste, of sensibility. I never saw a more sensitive child. You have a false image of him, father. My life isn't bound up with Arthur's the way my mother's was with you. Promiscuity with him is like a disease. It hangs in the air he breathes. Scent, lotion, cream. Man's a fetish. What, what did he do with all these women? He came home today especially to see you. You believe he loves me as I love you? He does. You believe none of the things I say about him? It's not your concern. You've given him everything, Matt. How can you attract another man? Get rid of him, men like that, a ten a penny. They destroy everything around them, believe me. I've seen it. I married him 25 years ago, Father. I'm too old to start my life again. No one is too old. Look at me. I start again. I intend to defect. In Russia, there's a home already furnished. It lies in the trees at the edge of a wood. In the evening, the sound of singing comes to me from a nearby village. You can come and join me. At long last, Matt, I shall have found some peace. Damned idiot. She'll sit and suffer like her mother. Now I've found the key to life. Nobody wants to use it. You all right, sir? You all right? I was discussing women's freedom. Sir? I was discovering my past. Anything of interest? Very. Would you care to tell me about it? You must buy the book. I don't give these things away for nothing. Now, uh, you were recalling earlier, sir, an incident at the seaside. Was I? The very first time. The very first time. I was lost on a station platform. There was a very large crowd. When I turned round, my parents had gone. I thought at the time they'd gone for good. I cried. All those strange faces gazing down. After a short while, my parents came back. They mounted a bus. We passed beneath a bridge, a bridge so tall. I thought that it must fall. So I, the people on it, looked like flies. Beyond the bridge, I saw the sea. I was wondering why I was recording those early times. It's as if my parents never came back. As if none of our parents ever came back. And throughout our lives, we stand gazing up at a multitude of faces none of which we shall ever know. Feels fine. I'm not fine. I'm ill. You sound a bit of a rascal to me. Well, it doesn't stop me being ill. That's true. You are young. Not very. To me, you're young. You're a boy. Not quite. Well, how old are you? Thirty-five. Do you have a practice? I have. Your father must be rich. Mm, not really. I don't believe in riches. Neither do I. Are you are you employed by the government? No. You've been talking to my daughter. I've spoken to Mrs. Benson, yes. She told you all about me. She has. Do you live locally? I do. I never saw you before. I never saw you until I came here. Yes, but you've heard about me. I have. What? Everything. Oh, really? 
You're the most famous man for miles around. Isn't there, isn't there an author somewhere round about? Not famous. Oh, I thought he was. No, not really. I'm interested in culture. Are you? Yes, I collected pictures. The house is full of them. I always chose those that wouldn't last. But this, this author, is he, in your opinion, one of the best? Well, I don't believe in choosing the best. Oh, you've come to the wrong house in that case. This is a house where only the best is good enough. My son-in-law is the best. My daughter was the best. My granddaughter is about to be the best. I myself was very nearly the best. Only a speech of 25 minutes and an interview of 15 seconds put an end to my career. I should have to be going. Oh, no, don't go, don't go, don't go. Stay. Stay and have some coffee. I've had some. You must have been speaking to my daughter for quite some time. Fifteen minutes. Briefing you. That's right. The man I had before I didn't like. So I heard. Sycophant. Really? Crawled on his knees. But I know you, I know your type. You're a runner. Life is all before you. <laughs> Don't you believe it? The integral part of anyone's life is always behind them. You, you'll have heard of my visits to the village. I have. Well, I'm a sport. I don't believe in keeping quiet about anything. So I gather. It was by opening my mouth too wide that I lost the opportunity of being the leader of my party. I'd have had a coterie of doctors, not one to take my pulse, but six. What do you think to that? There's only one pulse. Six opinions. What if five said it dead and only one said living? I'd have him sacked. Never disagree with medical opinion. It's inevitably mistaken. You're, you're not a prevaricator, are you? I don't think so. No, no, no. You're an opportunist. I like that. I like it very much, yes. It's men of integrity I can't stand. You never know exactly what they're up to. I'll uh, look in tomorrow. I'm not ill. I thought you were. I'm not that ill. I'd like to talk to you. What about? The telephone calls. You can tell me why you make them. Why inform me beforehand? You can think of an answer. Come early. I shall. Do you, do, you, do you have to go? I'll see you tomorrow. I don't like those people who watch from corners. I'm not those people. I'm your granddaughter. Who's that man? He's a government agent. He looks like a doctor. Yeah, to keep an eye on me. You need more eyes kept on you than anyone I know, Grandpa. You here to borrow money? I've come to see you. What about? I'm getting married. Am I to be consulted? Mummy asked me to come and tell you. Good. Is that all you have to say? Well, what have I to do? Get up and dance? You might. Here comes Gloria, riding into town. What shall we give her, a kiss or a crown? I remember. When you were young, I used to take you walking in the pram. Where did you? Round the West End. How people stared. They must have thought I'd stolen you. I bet. Or had a very young mistress. Most likely. Oh, my face was famous in those days. is not every man who could push a pram around the West End in the morning, then get up in the House of Commons and make a speech about the importance of preserving the art of boxing and other allied manly sports. <laughs> You're mad. And we stayed in the country. I take you across the fields, bouncing and bumping. Set you down beside a hedge. 
sit on a tree stump and look at you and think, what on earth will become of her? I devoted more time to you than I did to my daughter. And now, after all these years, she doesn't like me. I like you a lot. How much? A lot. You'd shoot me tomorrow if you got a chance. I wouldn't. The day after. Never. <laughs> in my father's time, we believed in God. So what? Now all you believe in are ideas, as if anything was ever changed, by grasping after one faith instead of another. Don't like my music, don't like my song. Don't run away, you may have it wrong. I remember you when I was young. All your little songs and ditties. Remember your last party conference, do you? Here am I, alone and thwarted, full of hope and not downhearted. <laughs> you had a moustache, quite fancied yourself, telling Grandma the world was made by special people. It was. People like you. People like her. Don't talk to me about Grandma. I know more about her than you imagine. There's another man back there. Where? In the house. He's an agent in the pay of your father. Liar. He promised me a passage to Russia. <laughs> Never. Now, I'd die this instant if what I say isn't the truth. There's a cottage waiting for me in the trees at the edge of a wood. In winter, the snow rises very deep. The howling of wolves comes to me as I lie tucked up warm at night. Bristol is father's catering manager. <laughs> you see. There was a time when I hoped you might be like me. I am like you. I scarcely see it. Well, who, who will you marry? A man. Me and I thought were on the way out. This is very much a man. Sounds like your father. That's what your mother said when she married you. What, what, what's he do? He's a writer. Good God! Isn't one lunatic in the family enough for you? Marry a man with a decent profession. Marry a mortician. Well, what's he right? He's a poet. I, I don't believe it. I'll give you his book. Bring it out here. I'll throw it away. Stephen, this is Grandfather. Hello, sir. I don't like people who show respect. Why is that, sir? Well, I don't know. I, I just don't like him. He's being mischievous. He doesn't like people who express themselves. That's your mother's talking again. We came to tell Gloria's parents that we intend to get married. Well, no, no artist in the world can afford to get married. Marriage is a commitment to life. Art is a commitment to self. She'll die. There'll be nothing left of her at the end of a month. I don't believe that, sir. You've got a job. Not at present. Is she going to keep you? I intend to teach. What's this book? She says you've written. We brought you a copy. I've left it in the house. We, we had two dogs. I was the only person in the house that didn't want them. Your mother wanted them. Your grandmother. My wife wanted them. It fell to my lot to train them. The women being sentimentalists were afraid to touch a hair of their heads. Well, at the end of six months, I had them trained to everyone's satisfaction. What with? Force. I received no thanks. I received abuse. Yet the dogs were trained. Now, beating and hardship will rid this young man of his poetical aspirations. It's a desolate world, Sir Richard. No form of expression, no uh, art. No singing? Well, I didn't construct this world. I was thrust into it without warning, just like you. And having arrived, I didn't start painting pictures. I took a good look at what I saw. I didn't like it. I got up and shouted. I made a fuss. I became a liability. The world is very few. I became, in short, a pain in the arse. In the arse of this world, I deployed my talent. Take no notice. He's always making speeches. He likes to hear the sound of his own voice. He destroyed his wife. I did not. You destroyed her, Grandpa. Perhaps she asked to be destroyed. Perhaps, on the other hand, she really loved you. 
However, Grandpa, we're not impressed. We do not approve of your party or its doctrine. The name of your party, old man, is death. Life! Life is what I've lived. Your achievements, Grandpa, are a pile of dust. The one person who loved you, you callously destroyed by doing the very things you accused my father of. With your obscene calls and grotesque abuse and your promenading of your genitals in the village street. You used her, Grandpa, but you won't use us. Call... call that doctor, Beck. I wouldn't stand for abuse like that in my house. It is not your house, it's my house. It's my mother's house, it's my father's house, it's where you live on sufferance. You see, what you're letting yourself in for, when I'm dead, is you she'll turn on. That's what you'll have for inspiration. Call, call, call that doctor back. Shall I call him back? If you shout, that catering man is bound to come. He's been summoned here to kill me. Why is he taking all this time? He has to make it look like an accident. I'm not complaining. I give him every chance. Don't, don't marry him. Don't marry him. Kill him. Kill him instead. You know, I could die out here. No one would notice. Is there anything you want, sir? Have you been listening? No, sir. Can I get you anything? All I get... Are accusations from people who never knew me. Yes, sir. You can report that back to Moscow. Sir. They can have that bit for nothing. Would you like me to stay and talk, sir? I've done with talking. All I want to see is action. Will that be all, sir? What? Sir, it's proliferate here like poison. I don't like it. I wouldn't have it. What can I do? Where can I go? Where are you off to? Those, those, those children, Matt, have been insulting me. No doubt you deserved it, Father. What makes you so vengeful? It'll do neither of us any good. And what makes you so vindictive? It brings out the worst in all of us. Has that doctor gone? He went some time ago. He asked me your name. I want you to sit here, he Father. He suggested you meet him in the village. You're incorrigible, Father. I don't know why you do it. If these things happen, why should I conceal them? Fine, soon there'll be no one who will even speak what to you. What have you to lose? When he comes again, invite him to your room. Give him, give him what he wants. You'll never have this chance again. It's like living on an alien planet. I sp speak the language, but nobody listens. I make the signs, but nobody sees. Best foot forward, in for a chance. Bring out the fiddle, and let's have a dance. Last night, his hair was cut. And this morning, passing the shop, he saw the bins being carried out. Across the top of one was strewn a wad of hair, the debris of a hundred skulls, like some eclectic genius gone mad. Grey, brown, black, curls, strands, a demonic head, carried high across the street, flung into a cart, crushed and driven off. Where do one's debris start? I like that best. I preferred the other. Don't you like him reading aloud? Not much. Prefers me to keep it to myself. Not really. What then? Don't like him spouting. That's the dictatorial side she gets from her grandfather, Mrs. Benson. Is it? Isn't it just? <laughs> What's the title, Stephen? Samson. Samson? I could do with a haircut. When I first met your father, he wasn't averse to writing poetry. I copied mine out of books, Stephen. Hey, what else did you keep secret? Not much. When I first went to university, most of the men had just come back from the war. Your grandfather didn't like any of them. Your father included. Were you in the war, sir? Oh, yes. I was in the medical corps. After that, I went up to university. Matilda was up at the time reading philosophy. He wrote one of my papers. Not a very long one. I never knew you were a theorist, father. I thought at the time it would appeal to your mother. What is it, Bristol? Sir Richard's gone, Mrs. Benson. Gone? Gone. Gone where? Well. I've no idea, sir. Must be the village. Yes, sir. I'll go and look for him, Mrs. Benson. We'd better all go. 
shove him in a straitjacket if we find him this time. I'll call the doctor. What is it that he's after, sir? He's used to power. When he hasn't got it, he grasps at everything around him. Stephen, if you find him, don't let him know he's being followed. No, sir. <laughs> Do I go left or do I go right? Do I go forward or do I go back? Is this the village I've arrived at? Or is it a place I knew as a child? Have you walked down on your own, sir? What? The village, sir? I have an appointment at the village. Yes, sir. I met a young woman the other day. She made all the appropriate signs. I don't believe she's a day over 35. I'm sorry we quarrelled, sir. Gloria has a dislike of being crossed, particularly by you. I didn't think young men like you believed in marriage. Yes, sir. I thought it had gone out to the younger generation. We believe in everything you do, sir. Astonishing. You're not a psychiatrist, are you? No, sir. Tell me, tell me a poem. What would you like? One of your own. Oh, I can't memorize my own, sir. Uh, like to hear one? If you like. Here's my Johnny, there's my Jane. Two old friends well met again. As good as yours. Better. <laughs> Sin is disfavored. Virtue is blessed. Well, bring out the ladies and let's pick the best. Now you try one. Wives can be wise, mistresses pretty. One in the country, two in the city. Hmm. Oxford, were you? Yes, sir. Public school? Sir. Do much for you? I ran away, sir. What for? It was an inequitable system. Ah, I had no schooling after the age of 12. You had it and objected. I objected. I never had it. Paths cross, sir. Yeah, fair enough. You, you believe everything that Gloria believes in, do you? Not everything, sir. Uh, I know her only too well. Give her a gun. None of us would be here tomorrow morning. Gloria believes the world can be made a better place, sir. Does she? It's a belief I share with her, sir. All I share with her are blood and bone. Don't you think that people's lives can be changed for the good, sir? All the change I've seen has been to the bad. Oh, that's a pessimistic view, which very few people could live with. I live with it. I've lived with it as long as I remember. The only relationship that counts is the one we hold with each other in trust forever. I'll walk with you through the village, sir. Why? Well, you've been sent down here to follow me, haven't you? No, sir. Oh, don't tell me. I can see you sitting there devising plans. I'm not a fool, even if I look like one. Are you out with Stephen, Father? What did I tell you? I can't go out without being followed. Are you on your way out, Father? Or on your way in? I'm on my way to an appointment in the village. Can I go nowhere without a guard? No one has any designs upon you, Father. We'll walk back home with Stephen. Goodbye, sir. Where are they going? What are they doing? What are they up to now? Where are you up to? Who are you? I'm your doctor. I'm off to the pub. Uh, do you like a drink? I was coming specially to fetch you. What for? My daughter has formed a profound attraction for you. Has she? She's a doctor of philosophy. She's set aside her talents for the sake of her family. Really? She would welcome a lover. I'm married. What's that got to do with it? Oh, I have a family of my own. No one will know. While well, the domestic staff are under the impression that you are attending on me, you may be wrapped in my daughter's embrace in the adjoining room. <laughs> Come for a drink. I'm not allowed drink. I'll buy you fruit juice. Fake fruit. Come early. I'll persuade her husband to leave the house by seven o'clock in the morning. Do you feel all right? Perfectly. Fork with me to the pub, then. Let me help you. It's not help. I want you, fool. It's action. Here you are, sir. Now, he's been sent to follow me. Mrs. Benson asked me to come down, sir. She thought you might need an arm to lean on on the way back up. I need no arm. Well, if you won't have a talk and you won't have a drink, is there anything I can do for I've you? I've given you my suggestions. What have you to lose? I should take him back to the house. See you. That man's a fool and not to be trusted. Anyone who pursues decency in public must lead a disreputable private life. 
How, uh, how much do you want? How much, sir? I can be there in that garden at my appointment within two minutes. Look at that window. There's a man beating his wife. Or is it a carpet? He's waving an arm. He's waving a beak. Fame has not eluded me. After all, it was his wife that I approached the other day. I, I, I like her. That's your granddaughter, sir. Oh, dear, oh, dear. You've been very naughty, Grandpa. I didn't notice. It created a commotion when you disappeared. You're not to be allowed on your own. You don't behave. I don't think anyone loves me. I don't think anyone cares. Your grandmother loved me. Ellen loved me. She sacrificed her life. I'm so tired, I can scarcely stand. It's all right, Grandpa. I'll send Bristol up to the house for the car. Right. I was dreaming of a journey I took as a child. With a bridge so high, I could scarcely see it. And the sea. I know at some point, it must come to an end. What do you think to him? He's ill. He's very ill. He doesn't know it. What has the doctor said? He's only another few months to live. Where does he come from? Where did he start? His father was a grocer. On another occasion, Grandpa told us, he mended watches. After that, he was unemployed. Grandpa went out to work at 12. He ran errands. He bought a shop. He went into politics when he was 25. He joined the wrong party. At that time, it believed in breeding. If he'd had a little, he might have got on further. He was the longest-serving Minister of Health. Then he made a speech which was critical of his colleagues. He became a dark horse. People mentioned him when they thought of an alternative leader. He was on the ballot papers for the party leadership two years after the war and came out third. When the time came to make his challenge, he'd lost support. The pages of history closed on Grandpa. He was given a knighthood and went into his act of being the cantankerous figurehead whom younger men looked up to and older men despised. Now he's the eldest. Those who knew him are dead. It's only you and I to criticize. Uh, uh, am I dreaming or did I imagine that? Meadows, Meadows, Meadows. Bris Bristol. Yes, sir. How, how are your children? They're well, sir. They're not dead. No, sir. Huh. Well, your 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 appointment will be scarcely for any time at all. Yes, sir. This chair will be empty. You'll be able to walk about the lawn in freedom. Sir? A man came to interview me the other day. He brought a camera. He asked me about the, the people I should have known, the great events to which I'd been a witness, the private words behind closed doors. It was all blank. I could remember nothing. I said, if you don't move soon, you'll be caught by the tide. He said, we're 34 miles inland. Where is the tide? The tide, I said, is at your heels. <laughs> he, he never stirred. I'll keep an eye on him for a while. Yes, ma'am. Shall I move your chair? No, thank you. Into the shade? No, thanks. Sun's going down. It is. The 
come and go like ghosts. I scarcely see them. Smoke is rising from a fire at the bottom of the garden, lit by that man who runs away when I offer him money. More sure of his job than he is of me. Soon, I shall have to rise with it. All I'll have left will be a handful of dust, a handful of chemicals with which I began in a back street shop in an industrial town. She's sitting over there. Are you calling, Father? What's happened to the house? Have those trees moved? That, that, that fire, Matt, is out of control. No, it isn't. That man who runs away when I offer him money is stoking it with leaves. You, you keep the fire burning. Preserve the flame. Where's that spy? He should be here. Sir? Sir? What, what seaport do we live from? This... This cottage. Is it at the edge of the wood or is it amongst the trees? When, when the peasants sing in the evening, are they from the village, or are they gypsies? Aren't gypsies allowed there? Are people free? Is there anything I can get you, Mrs. Benson? No, thank you. Are you, are you ashamed to be working for me? No, sir. What about the children? I doubt if they know who I work for, sir. Do they know my name? No, sir. Do they know anything about me? No, sir. Do they know that I exist? No, sir. That will be all, Bristol. Yes, ma'am. Will that be all? Is there... Anything else? I... I can't see you if you stand behind me. I, I was telling Matt. A bridge so tall, I thought that it would fall. So high, the people on it looked like flies. Beyond the bridge, I saw the sea. All those strange faces gazing down. Ellen. Ellen! 